You're listening to Shakespeare's Sonnets Exposed, Episode 5, Sonnet 4. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What, what if I say, I say I'm not, not just another one in your place? You're, You're the, the pretender. pretender. What, what if I say I will never surrender? Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons for their contributions, and more importantly, for showing faith in a project I've been obsessed with, possessed by, and struggling to get off the ground for years. I've re-recorded episode one as an audio podcast, and not only does it include more information, but I think it's an enormous improvement. So even if you did watch the first video already, I humbly request that you give it a listen. Please keep your suggestions and criticism coming. Right. Let's analyze Sonnet 4. Unthrifty loveliness, why dost thou spend upon thyself thy beauty's legacy? Spend upon thyself has been understood to mean masturbation, but throughout the sonnet sequence Shakespeare uses the word spend very consistently, a great example coming from Sonnet 100. Spendest thou thy fury on some worthless song? What Shakespeare is spending is time from his remaining days on earth, the passion and love that he has left over that should have been his son's inheritance, and his spirit and philosophy. Shakespeare is treating the soul, his life force, as currency. He is a wallet containing his words and ideas, and he must choose how to spend them. Due to the nature of the sonnets being Shakespeare's reflection, the meaning of these two lines becomes ambiguous. Is Shakespeare being selfish by writing the sonnets, which is how he spends his beauty's legacy? Or is he being selfish by not writing the sonnets and keeping his legacy for himself? Nature's bequest gives nothing but doth lend, and being frank she lends to those are free. In addition to the obvious meaning, throughout the sequence the feminine word nature refers to Shakespeare, the author of the sonnets. The word derives from the Latin word natura, meaning birth, nature, or quality. Each sonnet is born according to the theme of childbearing established in the previous sonnets, and the sonnets espouse Shakespeare's nature, his personality. Nature is ever-changing and evolving, whereas the sonnets are static. The word bequest is derived from the English bequeath, to leave legacy by a will, and the Old English about speech, which is an interesting source for a word meaning inheritance, but if it's relevant, plays into the sonnet's function as inducing speech in the reader. In Middle English, frank meant both free and generous. So with the meanings of these words contextualized, it becomes apparent that Shakespeare is not giving his spirit to the sonnet, but lending it, and is lending it on condition that the sonnet will share it, both with the following sonnets and with the reader. Then, beauteous niggard, why dost thou abuse the bounteous largesse given thee to give? Prophetess Yajura, why dost thou use so great a sum of sums, yet canst not live? Sum of sums prepares us for the word audit in the following quatrain, and recalls This fair child of mine shall sum my count from sonnet 2, ultimately referring to the sonnet sequence, which is the sum of sonnets, each sonnet being a sum of words and lines and ideas. Shakespeare is the beauteous niggard, the miser, if he doesn't share his beauty with the sonnet. The sonnet is miserly if it doesn't share Shakespeare's beauty by leading into another sonnet. Neither Shakespeare nor the sonnet profits directly from the usury, the loaning, both because Shakespeare will be dead when the sonnets are read, and because the sonnets cannot live by themselves. For having traffic with thyself alone, thou of thyself thy sweet self dost deceive. Then how, when nature calls thee to be gone, what acceptable audit canst thou leave? The word audit comes from the word hearing, which is an interesting word because each sonnet or little song must be read aloud in order for it to take effect. The sonnets cannot communicate without echo, the reader sounding out the words. If Shakespeare doesn't lend the sonnet his beauty, there will be no audit when he dies. When Shakespeare sees his sonnets off by publishing them, what effect will they have if they are not read? Thy unused beauty must be tombed with thee which, used, lives the executor to be. Any unwritten work will be buried with Shakespeare, and any unread sonnets will be buried in the sequence. But if these sonnets are written and read, 
They will be alive and will be executing Shakespeare's will. Pun intended. While the sonnets have been recognized and adored by scholars and fans the world over, they haven't enjoyed the same kind of mass appeal as his plays, and Shakespeare's intention for his works was always to appeal to a broad cross-section of society. It is my aim to rescue the sonnets from obscurity, from the darkness, and to that end I am producing a graphic novel adaptation, recording these podcasts, and tattooing 154 images representing the sonnets onto my body. If you haven't already, then please sign up to support me at www.patreon.com slash fisherking, and please join our community discussions on Reddit at slash r slash sonnet comics with an X. Thanks for listening. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What, what if I say I'm not just another not one in your place? You're, you're the, the pretender. pretender. What, what if I say I will never surrender? surrender.